The Four Knights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 108, The Beast of Doom. And from the castle of the King of Demons, everyone was watching the strange phenomenon that was happening at that moment inside the underworld. And Zeldris wondered if they were feeling it. The whole atmosphere of the demon realm was shaking. And no doubt this was proof that he really had awakened from his sleep. The behemoth, which is also called the Beast of Yin and Yang. Normally he is docile and his body silently emanates a life force that brings vitality to all living beings in the underworld, but on the other hand, when he perceives a great anomaly he turns into the worst thing there is, as if in response to this abnormal event, and begins to suck the life out of those same creatures that were previously blessed by his power. In that instant, and realizes that the nations have returned. While Donnie wondered if it was really possible to reach the gate that was on the monster's back. But Kyan doesn't let go, and calls the Donnie a coward, who reacts by asking him to be careful what he says. However, the enthusiastic young man asks, why do you think we can stay perfectly well in the miasma of the demon realm? And he himself answers, that's right. We have Lord Tristan here with us. So as long as we have divine protection over us, there's no reason to fear this monster. But that's not quite true, and Zeldris explains why. The king of the underworld believes that certainly the divine protection can provide some resistance. But the behemoth's negative power is incomparable. So he doubts very much that they will be able to reach the gate even with the divine protection. But Tristan is not willing to give up, and tells his uncle that there must be some other way. However, Zeldris is direct in saying that in view of the people and options they had at that moment it was impossible. But while he was saying this someone approached them, and Lancelot and the first to notice that Percival had also returned. And is very happy to see her friend again, unlike the nations who didn't even want to look at Percival. The demons are also very happy with the presence of their savior. And finally, when seeing Percival, Zeldris compliments by saying, impossible, before having you here, and so Zeldris reveals that they are lucky to have Percival with them. And the boy ends up with a silly face, not understanding anything. And so do Wynne and Isolde, who question what he means by this. And Tristan also asks the same question asking his uncle what it means. And Zeldris answers by saying that Tristan was also a baby at that time, so it's no wonder he didn't know. And Percival was still lost in the role. For he couldn't understand a word they were saying. And Donnie even tries to help by telling him that the gate to the Eternal Kingdom was on the back of a giant beast called Behemoth. However, Zeldris decides to finally tell everything he knew, and why he had said this before, so he starts by saying, it happened about 16 years ago. The king of the demons was defeated by the seven deadly sins during the holy war, and this event awakened the behemoth and caused a disaster in the demon's kingdom. The enraged beast released its negative power that spread throughout the underworld. And so not only the flora and fauna, but also the demons that boasted a strong life force, fell and died one after the other. Already in the distant past, when the king of the demons poured out his will on his servant who conspired against him, the beast woke up and became furious. But thanks to his immense power, he put the behemoth back into a deep sleep. But I still don't have as much power as he does, to be honest. So the most I could do was to inspire and encourage my people. So without being able to do anything, the years went by and I was working hard to try to save the survivors. And while Zeldris was flying over the demon's kingdom in search of survivors, something unusual happened. The king of the underworld notices something falling in free fall that has come out of the great hive. And that was a child, a human boy. And in the blink of an eye, Zeldris manages to reach the child and save his life. He, however, didn't know very well how to hold a baby, but he had to learn on the spot. And this child was Percival, 
who was lost in the demon realm. At that moment everyone was surprised by this story. After all, how did Percival end up there, and at that very moment, everyone wonders if this is just a coincidence. But Zeldra says he is sure that it was not a coincidence, it was something inevitable. And he goes on. Although puzzled by the fact that a human child was lost in the underworld, I could only feel sorry for him. For a baby probably wouldn't last long inside the miasma of the underworld and would inevitably lose its life. However, despite my worries and the miasma, you didn't stop playing for a second. And contrary to my thoughts, I couldn't believe it even when I saw it with my own eyes. For wherever you went, those who were on the verge of death simply came back to life. And that is why they began to call Percival the Savior and took care of him as if he were their own son. Moreover, his power reached the area around the castle, repelling even the negative power of the behemoth. However, one day, Percival suddenly disappeared. We were all worried, looking for you. But just as suddenly as he disappeared, he returned. And the first words he said were, Payamashu went to sleep. And he literally did exactly that, the giant behemoth fell into a deep sleep and the demon world was saved. And hearing all this about Percival, had everyone stumped, they didn't know what to say, maybe with the exception of nations who still couldn't seem to face Percival. But Dottie ends up being the first to speak up, the boy holding and rocking the boy starts to say that if this is really true, they don't need to be afraid of any giant beast. Percival, however, says he doesn't know if it's really true, because he can't remember that time. But anyway, and says that they stayed together with Percival. However, the boy ends up saying that first he needs to apologize to everyone. Percival tells them that he found the fragment of the coffin of eternal darkness, but it was stolen by one of the Chaos Knights who found it first. The demons tell him that they saw it too, and that the knight disappeared soon after. And shaken Donny presses Percival, questioning what he was doing, why he didn't stop the knight. But the boy replies that he doesn't know the answer, and now fears that they might escape with the fragment. But Gelda asks him to be calm about this. For the hive is being heavily guarded, so no intruder will be able to get in or out, and even if they try to go after the behemoth through the door, it will be useless. And besides, the fire season will also continue for another week. And asks what is this? And Zeldris explains that in this season, a rain of fire falls over the whole area where the behemoth is. A rain of clods of iron wrapped in a blazing flame. In other words, this means that the enemy will not be able to move easily so they can use this to their advantage to find a way to recover the coffin fragment. But Tristan tells them that this will not work. He tells them that all Chaos Knights possess a seal that connects them to the Eternal Realm. So this way, they can instantly send the stolen coffin fragment to the Eternal Realm. And knowing this leaves everyone shaken, completely devastated, because it was no longer within their power to prevent the activation of the coffin, which would cause a terrifying scenario. And Percival takes the blame for this, the boy confesses, that he was careless and that he put everyone in danger. And Percival says he feels sorry for Tristan too. For now he fears that Meliodas, his father, will be sealed. Yet Tristan approaches the boy and asks Percival to raise his head. The boy remembers that his father has entrusted his fate to him, so for now he thinks it best to leave it to chance and try to find out what they can do. And Zeldris ends up saying that this is something his brother would probably say. However, he still agrees with Tristan. Zeldris then calls Percival by name, and looking at the boy, he starts to say, you once saved all the demons of the kingdom. So no one will hold a grudge against you. And very moved, Percival then begins to say, Jeldo, 
guys. I. I. But before he speaks, Lancelot slams his fist into his helmet and says that that's enough, that he can now go back to being Percival as he always was. And that the next time he encounters them, he must not make another blunder, and that he has an obligation to win. And Percival is confident, on the other hand, the same cannot be said of Donny, Nations, and N, for they recognize that their enemies are very skilled, so how will they manage to fight them? And Lancelot agrees, but he reminds them that they have a week until the rain stops, and they will not stand idly by until then. So Lancelot says, let's use this week to make you stronger, for I will train you personally. In true Lancelot style, the week of training begins. Continued in the next chapter, entitled, A Week of Testing.